is the entire system breaking down one economic sector at a time and it is spreading very very quickly now German Secretary General the Economic Council of the CDU Wolfgang Steiger he has highlighted the growing economic crisis in Europe well it is getting worse the negative interest rates of Draghi and the ECB he's saying that they have totally failed he has pointed out that despite various EU stress tests for banks, time and time again, they continue to fail, just like the one in the United States. These stress tests were put into place to give everyone the feeling that everything is going to be okay. Because once a disaster hits, like the Great Recession of 2008, what they normally do during these time periods, they need to make everyone feel better, more comfortable. They need to gain trust again. So they raise the FDIC insurance and they say, oh, look, we're going to test these banks this time and this will not happen again. They did this back in 1930. This is when they implemented the FDIC insurance because no one had faith in the banking system anymore and they needed to bring the funds back to the banks. So this is what they have done. They've done it again in the 2008 crisis. And we could see at this point that these stress tests, they're completely fake, phony and false. And... He is out there saying that, listen, all this has not worked and we're in this fake recovery. The only thing that's going to work is reforms. Actually, what's going to work is getting rid of these central banks, is getting rid of these this entire manipulated economy, going back to a true economy where there's honest reporting, honest transactions, honest currency. What we're seeing today is everything the criminal acts of the banking system that's what we're seeing now we are seeing the economy break apart in all different areas we know the retail sector it is a complete and utter disaster now department stores they're getting hit very very hard and they're doing whatever they possibly can to bring the customers into the stores they're looking at huge discounts sales they're even discounting cosmetics. And we see Lord & Taylor, Bloomingdale's, Macy's, and many of the other big department stores, well, they are basically giving 15%, 25%, whatever they possibly can do to bring in people into the stores. Now, what is happening here uh, is the corporate media is making it seem like everyone is just, well, they're going online and they're shopping there. Well, if that is true, the retail industry would be booming right now. They'd be like, oh my God, look, our online sales, they are fantastic because again, Macy's has their department store and they have an online presence. Bloomingdale's has the same thing. Sears has the same thing. Every single retailer has an online presence. Now, these companies, they are going bankrupt. It's not because, oh, everyone went to online. No. What is happening here is that people aren't spending the money. Remember, online is only 8% of total retail sales. So what we're seeing is a breakdown because people don't have the jobs. If you don't have the jobs, you don't have the extra money. And a lot of people, it's very difficult for them to see this. I mean, coming from the younger generation where they're got, uh, graduating college, coming out of high school, they can't find those jobs or those individuals that have lost their jobs, they get it. But people who are retired, who are receiving a pension, who've made it throughout this entire period, it's very difficult for them to see it. They will see it when all of a sudden their pension disappears. People wake up when it actually affects them. When it doesn't affect them, and let's say there's an individual that is working in a corporation, maybe they're not getting um, a raise with the cost of inflation. Maybe they're not getting that, but they still have their job. They're saying, oh, yes, we, I noticed that, but everything seems to be fine. And if you're not looking for a job, you don't know what the job market's really like. Just like if you're not selling a house, you really don't know what the housing market is like. If you're on a pension and you're receiving the same amount of money each time, you really don't know what the economy is like. Yes, you can see inflation here and there, food prices going up, but until these things disappear, until it affects you, you really don't understand what's going on. Now, it has affected millions of people. Think about it. Over a 100 million people 
Well, they're still looking for jobs. The government just doesn't count them. So they're affected. They understand what is happening. And the rest of the population, when this whole entire system comes down, they will also understand what is going to happen. Now, when we look at what is happening within the stock market, now we know this is based on one gigantic illusion. And if you look at what is going on in the S&P 500 and everything else, you can see that they use some tricky accounting methods to make everyone believe that everything is perfectly fine. Everything is great. Now, since July of 2012, so over the past five years or so, the trailing 12-month earnings per share of all the companies in the S&P 500 index, that rose around 12% in total, or just over 2% per year on an average basis, or barely the rate of inflation. These are not earnings under the generally accepted accounting principles gap, but adjusted earnings as reported by companies to make their earnings look better. Not all companies report adjusted earnings. Some just stick to gap earnings and live with the consequences, but many others are reporting adjusted earnings. And that's what Wall Street propagates, adjusted earnings. Adjusted earnings are earnings with bad stuff adjusted out of them. It's almost like looking at your own household budget and saying, okay, we don't have that credit card debt. Let's get rid of that. We don't have a car payment. Let's get rid of that. Uh, we're not going to include that. Wow, we're doing fantastic. We have all this extra money. This is what companies do. So they're generally displaying earnings in the most favorable light. And these adjusted earnings are now back where they've been on March 2014 with no growth whatsoever. So even this method is not working. This is total stagnation, even for the adjusted earnings. And yet, over the same three plus years, the S&P 500 index has soared to 33%. This is a problem. Now, given that there's been zero earnings growth over the past three years, even under the most optimistic adjusted earnings scenario, and only about 2% per year on average over the past five years, the S&P 500, these companies, are not high growth companies. On average, they're stagnating companies with stagnating earnings. In other words, earnings, they didn't expand. The only thing that expanded was the multiple of those earnings to the share prices, the PE ratio. And this is a major problem. We're going to see a stock market tsunami. This is like red flashing lights saying, hey, there's going to be huge, huge problems. Now, the Fed is out there and we know that Janet Yellen is going to present the Fed's monetary report to Congress this week. And her remarks are already being posted online. She's saying that the valuation pressures across a range of assets and several indicators of investors' risk appetite have increased further since mid-February. So, what is she actually saying? Well, Yellen right now is clearly warning that the Fed sees bubbles in the system. So she is saying that the valuation pressures in the market is simply incredible, particularly when you consider that the Fed has been actively propping up stocks for the better part of eight years. They created these bubbles. And now they're saying, yes, they're not calling them bubbles, but we see them and they're going to pop. Secondly, Yellen reiterates the Fed's intention to begin normalizing its balance sheet this year. Now, this is an absolute game changer for the markets, as it marks the first time in a decade that the Fed will be actively withdrawing liquidity from the system. Remember, they've been purchasing all these stocks. They've been pumping up the market. They've been manipulating everything. Now they're trying to let the air out. And you know what's going to happen because once they start doing this, there are no retail investors that are going in and buying all of this stuff to keep the market up. So the Fed is getting ready to pull the plug on the markets. What does this mean for stocks? Well, we're going to have the third 
and worst crisis in 20 years. And if you look at this over time, you can see that the pattern is exactly the same. In the year 2000, all of a sudden, the S&P came down. In the year 2008, same thing. The S&P came down. And back then, the S&P was around 1600. Today, we're at 24, 25 or so, around that area. I mean, this fall is going to be incredible. And it's going to be absolutely catastrophic. So, when we look at all of this, we can see that we're in for major problems. Now, Bank of America, they've been looking at what the Fed is doing, and they're trying to figure out why is the Fed suddenly panicking or rushing to do this? Why now? Why do they need to do this? Well, when they looked at all of this, they noticed a pattern, and we've noticed the same exact pattern. And what is this pattern? The over shooting on the unemployment rate. Now, the unemployment rate has fallen well below even the Fed's revised estimate. Now, several Fed officials have pointed out that undershooting full employment can and will be problematic. The Boston Fed President Rosengren argued last summer that after hitting a cyclical low, there are no episodes in which unemployment rose a bit and remained stable at its natural employment rate. Rather, a recession has always followed. Now, when we go back in time and we look at the unemployment rate and where it overshot, we can see that this is absolutely true. If we go all the way back to the 60s, as soon as this occurred, we were in a recession. Around 1970, 71, we know we were coming off the gold standard, we entered into a recession. 74, 75, same thing, a recession. Fast forward to the 80s, we saw the same thing, it was a recession. 90s, recession. 2000, 2001, recession. 2008, fits the same exact pattern, saw a recession. Here we are once again, and we just overshot the unemployment rate, which they were predicting. And we can see at this point that this is a problem. It fits into a pattern. And we're seeing the same consistent pattern, not just with this indicator, but with many other indicators. A flattening yield curve, an inverted yield curve. And this tells us from all of these different things that we are headed towards this horrific collapse of the system. Now, since 2008, they've learned how to manipulate the system like they've never done before. They set up a trading desk. They set the system where they took full control because Congress allowed them. They are allowed to create stimulus like there was no tomorrow. This has never been seen before. And they were able to continually keep this up over time. This is why it has lasted so long, because the manipulation goes far and deep. The only problem that the Fed has, yes, they can manipulate the stock market. They can manipulate the unemployment rate along with the government. They can manipulate the creation of currency. They can manipulate stimulus. They can manipulate GDP numbers with the help of the government. They can manipulate all these numbers. The one thing they can't do is manipulate the real economy, the everyday economy that people live in. They can't do it. They can't make people go and spend their money. Have you ever wondered why all of a sudden, and it's not all of a sudden because we've been tracking this, we knew that retail was bombing years ago. We saw it coming. We reported on it each time because we said, if people don't have jobs, retail is just going to get worse and worse as time went on. And what have we seen? Exactly that. They can't make people go out and spend money they don't have. This has always been their problem. Why do you think they're talking about helicopter money? 
because they're hoping they'd be able to manipulate this system much longer. And what is happening here, they can't make companies earn more money. Yes, they can buy back stocks. Yes, they can close plants, save money. They can lay off people. But when you do this, it affects the spending of everyday people. So the real economy, they can't manipulate. And as this continually falls apart, like back in 2008, prior to this, back during the Great Recession, we saw that the stock market at that time, that was at all time highs back in the Great uh, Depression of 1929, the stock market was like 400 points. And they were like, wow, this is never gonna go down. Back in 2008, it hit 14,000 points. Here we are, what, 21,000 points. The problem is, is that they know eventually the manipulation, it's not going to hold because eventually reality sets in. The retail apocalypse continues. The pension systems in the municipalities, in the states, in private companies, well, they implode. Companies, well, they can't make the sales, so they have to lay off people. They close manufacturing plants. And with less people working, you have a bigger problem. So it started off with manufacturing. Then they said we were a service country. Everyone was getting retail jobs and they were getting jobs in the food industry. Now retail is falling apart. So all those people, well, they can't go to manufacturing because that doesn't exist. They can't go to retail because that doesn't exist anymore. Where do they go? Well, they can't go to food and beverage because everything that we're looking at with restaurants, that is also declining. So the service industry that we're supposedly are, a service country, that is now falling apart. So basically they have this catastrophic collapse coming and there's nothing they can do about it. They think they can, but there's nothing they can do about it. And they know that the system's eventually going to come down. Now, what they want to do is they want to control it. They want to control the narrative. They want to tell the story of how this happened and why it happened to, of course, take all the blame off of them. This is what we see happening right now. And it's a sign as they continually suppress gold and silver more and more each day, like these little flash crashes, as the stock market moves up, that actually is a signal that we're getting closer and closer to the crash. That is the entire system breaking down one economic sector at a time, and it is spreading very, very quickly. Now, German Secretary General of the Economic Council of the CDU, Wolfgang Steiger, he has highlighted the growing economic crisis in Europe. Well, it is getting worse. The negative interest rates of Draghi and the ECB He's saying that they have totally failed. He has pointed out that despite various EU stress tests for banks, time and time again, they continue to fail, just like the one in the United States. These stress tests were put into place to give everyone the feeling that everything is going to be okay. Because once a disaster hits, like the Great Recession of 2008, what they normally do during these time periods, they need to make everyone feel better, more comfortable. They need to gain trust again. So they raise the FDIC insurance and they say, oh, look, we're going to test these banks this time and this will not happen again. They did this back in 1930. This is when they implemented the FDIC insurance because no one had faith in the banking system anymore and they needed to bring the funds back to the banks. So this is what they have done. They've done it again in the 2008 crisis. And we could see at this point, that these stress tests, they're completely fake, phony, and false. And he is out there saying that, listen, all this has not worked, and we're in this fake recovery. The only thing that's going to work is reforms. Actually, what's going to work is getting rid of these central banks, is getting rid of these this entire manipulated economy, going back to a true economy where there's honest reporting, honest transactions, honest currency. What we're seeing today is everything, the criminal acts of the banking system. That's what we're seeing. Now, 
we are seeing the economy break apart in all different areas. We know the retail sector, it is a complete and utter disaster. Now, department stores, they're getting hit very, very hard, and they're doing whatever they possibly can to bring the customers into the stores. They're looking at huge discounts, sales. They're even discounting cosmetics. And we see Lord & Taylor, Bloomingdale's, Macy's, and many of the other big department stores, well, they are basically giving 15%, 25%, whatever they possibly can do to bring in people into the stores. Now, what is happening here uh, is the corporate media is making it seem like everyone is just, well, they're going online and they're shopping there. Well, if that is true, the retail industry would be booming right now. They'd be like, oh my God, look, our online sales, they are fantastic because again, Macy's has their department store and they have an online presence. Bloomingdale's has the same thing. Sears has the same thing. Every single retailer has an online presence. Now, these companies, they are going bankrupt. It's not because, oh, everyone went out looking for a job. You don't know what the job market's really like. Just like if you're not selling a house, you really don't know what the housing market is like. If you're on a pension and you're receiving the same amount of money each time, you really don't know what the economy is like. Yes, you can see inflation here and there, food prices going up. But until these things disappear, until it affects you, you really don't understand what's going on. Now, it has affected millions of people. Think about it. Over a hundred million people, well, they're still looking for jobs. The government just doesn't count them. So they're affected. They understand what is happening. And the rest of the population, when this whole entire system comes down, they will also understand what is going to happen. Now, when we look at what is happening within the stock market, now we know this is based on one gigantic illusion. And if you look at what is going on in the S&P 500 and everything else, you can see that to online, no, what is happening here is that people aren't spending the money. Remember, online is only 8% of total retail sales. So what we're seeing is a breakdown because people don't have the jobs if you don't have the jobs you don't have the extra money and a lot of people it's very difficult for them to see this i mean coming from the younger generation where they're got, uh, graduating college coming out of high school they can't find those jobs or those individuals that have lost their jobs they get it but people who are retired who are receiving a pension who've made it throughout this entire period it's very difficult for them to see it they will see it when all of a sudden their pension disappears. People wake up when it actually affects them. When it doesn't affect them, and let's say there's an individual that is working in a corporation, maybe they're not getting um, a raise with the cost of inflation. Maybe they're not getting that, but they still have their job. They're saying, oh, yes, we, I noticed that, but everything seems to be fine. And if you're 